Hi, I'm Arthur Haynes and I'm here to talk to you today about Rosa, which is the genus of roses. And it turns out that it's one of our favorite foods that we love to gather in the winter. For anyone that's been following my YouTube videos, you're aware that the foraging for my household doesn't stop when the snow comes, that there are still lots of plant foods and plant medicines and fungal medicines for that matter that we can gather from the landscape once the snow has blanketed uh, the ground. One of the great things about roses is that they persist on the shrubs for quite some time so it gives us a really long period of collection. Starting around September we can collect these fruits that you see here all the way through until about March. So we have this long window of collecting when we can rely on these as a wonderful food. Now when we think of roses, we think of vitamin C. Many people have read in wild food literature about the vitamin C content. What I don't think people are aware of is exactly how high the vitamin C content is. We often think of citrus fruits as being what's high in vitamin C, or at least that's what we're told. And know that there are species of roses that have over a hundred times the ascorbic acid content that oranges and other citrus fruits possess. And in fact, when you look at it in terms of per unit effort or a volume that we could gather, roses are really a good bang for their buck, so to speak. Um, the species that have that incredibly high content of ascorbic acid are found in Europe. We have a number of species here uh, in North America that are also extremely high. Now vitamin C is a really important vitamin for us to deal with. One of the really important issues is that it is not a fat soluble vitamin. It be, by being a water soluble vitamin, it's one that's very difficult for us to store in our body, which means we have to continually take it in from the foods that we eat. Now that worked out fine when we lived on a wild diet and we were constantly consuming foods that are high in vitamin C. It doesn't work so well here in our domesticated world because we're eating a lot of plants that have been genetically altered and actually have less vitamin C content than a lot of the greens and fruits that we could be gathering from uh, the landscape. Vitamin C serves some important functions in the human body. Tissue growth and repair need vitamin C. The adrenal glands, the functioning of the adrenal glands require vitamin C. And connective tissue, especially collagen, requires vitamin C for its formation, which makes it incredibly important for periodontal health. It's also, uh, as well, really important to consider that there are some vitamins and minerals that we cannot metabolize without vitamin C. That includes the amino acids phenylalanine and tyrosine, as well as some of the B-complex vitamins. And for that matter, iron is much more easily absorbed in our body when we have high vitamin C content on board. Keep in mind also that vitamin C is an antioxidant, which means that it protects us against cancer. And it works synergistically with vitamin E, because where vitamin E attacks free radicals that are in cell membranes, vitamin C attacks the free radicals that are in biological fluids. So together they work really well to protect us from cancer. And vitamin C also increases the functioning of our immune system, so that alone protects us from cancer and infection. Vitamin C is such an important vitamin for us, it's actually responsible for over 300 metabolic functions, or I should say is used in over 300 metabolic functions. So it's a very critical one for us to take in. Now here we're looking at the hip of the rose. And many people think that this red fleshy structure is the fruit when in fact it isn't. The hip actually consists of two parts an accessory tissue, and that's what you're seeing here, the red fleshy exterior, and then the true fruits on the inside, which are tiny seed-like fruits called achenes, A-C-H-E-N-E-S, achenes. And the achene is the true fruit. Now many foraging books will have you discard the achenes, 
But in fact, when you do that, you're discarding a great deal of nutrition because there is a tremendous amount of vitamin E and omega-3 fatty acids that are found in the Akins. And if you discard this portion, you are actually ridding a lot of nutrition from the fruit that you could be consuming. Now, some of our non-natives that occur in this part of the world, like the beach rose, Rosa rugosa, simply have so many akines within the hip that it's cumbersome to consume them. Here we're looking at one of our native roses. This is Rosa palustris, called swamp rose. And swamp rose has very few seed-like fruits on the inside of the hip, making it really easy to consume them. There's also a rumor where people talk about you developing uh, itchy buttocks, as it's called, from eating too many of the Akeens. And I can tell you from experience that that is a falsehood, at least for the species found in the Northeast. I've consumed them in quantities for extended periods of time with no issue. So don't let any of the wives' tales found in the foraging book scare you off from consuming the Akeens on the inside. Now, gathering the hips of roses can be prickly work, especially when you get into a tangle of them. Now, notice I use the word prickle. Again, while we're trying to be accurate about the parts of rose, we want to point out that the poison song, Every Rose Has Its Thorn, is really inaccurate because roses don't have thorns. A thorn to a plant taxonomist is a modified branch. And what roses have are outgrowths of the epidermis, which are called prickles. So we really need to modify that song to every rose has its prickle. Unfortunately, I don't think the band would necessarily be open to this suggestion, uh, but just the same, somebody needs to make it to them. Anyways, back to collecting the fruits. Quite easy to do, especially if you're taking your time and aren't getting stuck amongst the prickles, but you'll notice every now and again you do get caught up on them and you can snag your clothes. So just move carefully and with deliberation. In other words, move deliberately when you're um, traveling around the roses. It's easiest if you do a slight twist so that you can leave the stalk behind because what we want is just the hip. And the natives had so many wonderful ways of making collection go faster. And it's nice to be able to have both hands so that you can hold things steady with one and remove with the other. And that's where a blicky comes in. Some type of container that you can tie to your waist or just string around your neck. This is a pine bark blicky um, that's held together with some reverse wrapped cord and strung around my neck. And it frees up my hands so that I can move much faster during collection. Now the trick for you, of course, will be to find where you can gather uh, roses during the winter season because not all the species have hips that persist so nicely through the winter season. Our native species tend to quite well and those include species like Rosa palustris, the swamp rose, which is what I'm gathering here today, and some of its relatives like Rosa virginiana, the Virginia rose, and Rosa carolina, the carolina rose. These are other very closely related species that keep their hips on through the entire season, again giving you a long period of collection. Swamp rose, which is what we're gathering right now, as its name, as its common name would indicate, does tend to occur in wetlands. And what I'm showing you right now is a large tidal shrub swamp along a river that flows into Merry Meeting Bay, which is a very extensive freshwater tidal river delta here in mid-coast Maine. So I encourage you to get outside during the winter and get exploring some of the wetlands via snowshoe. This is a great time to get out into the swamps because they're frozen over so you don't have to deal with wading through the muck and it makes for really convenient travel this time of year. Remember that vitamin C, vitamin E, and omega-3 fatty acids are all something that are put together in these hips at a very high content so long as you're consuming at least some of those seed-like fruits on the interior. That means Rosa is one of the best fruits to protect us from cancer and infection. So it really makes it a superfood that's found right here um, on the New England landscape. 